Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Stephanie and this is Lindy Stitches on YouTube where I ramble about cross stitch to strangers on the internet. So I design cross stitch patterns and you can find those at lindystitches.com. People call me Lindy all the time and I have just begun to respond to it without even noticing. So it's kind of strange, right? Anyway, I'm back and it's only been one month since my last update, which is highly unusual for me. I don't know if you can hear that, but that is the sound of children in public school. All three of them, public school. So it's kind of the sound of terror and it's kind of the sound of loneliness but every now and then, it's the sound of utter bliss. We're adjusting, we're getting used to it. It means I have more time um, to spend on Lindy Stitches and that has been a joy for me. All right, so today we have the usual recipe of what I've been working on, the things that I have purchased I have one wonderful finish to share with you and a giveaway. Let's just be random and start with the giveaway. So a lot of people give away cross stitch patterns and should you win my giveaway you will receive cross stitch patterns. However I like the incentive to be a little bit different and so I give away weird junk. I love uh, finding weird bizarre things at the antique store and sharing them with you. So last giveaway was for some of these weird little hanging head dolly ladies. <laughs> this one's mine. Three of the three, the, her three sisters went out into the world to spread quirky weirdness wherever they went. So today's giveaway is equally weird and I hope equally enticing. So, <laughs> I have one of those printer's drawers hung up on the wall, as I think a lot of us do. So the drawers that printers use to put their little letters in. And it's a fun thing to have on the wall, but it also can be a little peculiar because the squares are very tiny. And so it's hard to find tiny things to put in the little shelf. You know, first world problems. Anyway, um, my mom was getting rid of these things. Now why she had them, I have no clue. But my mom also likes to collect weird things. And so I was at her house. <laughs> this was in the pile of, do you want this stuff? These are tiny little tin cans that were like for play kitchens. In what decade? I have no idea. They're tarnished, like, they're tarnished. They have, they have wonderful labels on them. So these two are mine. These go in the shelf. Milk. And like, they have like all these little descriptive texts on them. Libby's Milk. The children will like hot chocolate or cocoa made with Libby's milk. It's pure cow's milk reduced to its present consistency by evaporation. It contains no preservatives nor adulterant. They don't use the word adulterant in canned food anymore. But there's nothing in them. They're just for play. But look at this. Pork and beans. Pork and beans with tomato sauce in every way live up to perfection guaranteed by the Libby label. Here's the other two that I kept. Canned salmon. I keep the ones that are the weirdest, okay? The canned salmon and the cooked corned beef. Ask your grocer for other Libby's canned meats. <laughs> are these wonderful? 
Like, what are you gonna do with them? I don't know what you're gonna do with them. All right, so should you win my giveaway, I'm gonna give away two packages of goodies. You might have some apple butter, uh, some kraut, I'm tempted to keep the kraut because there's not enough canned kraut in the world, right? I'm tempted to read you all the cans, but I won't bother. Okay. Spinach. Do any of you eat spinach out of a can? Like, I really hope not. The California asparagus. Look at how wonderful it is. California asparagus. Doesn't that look so appetizing? Oh my goodness. It's packed immediately after being cut and thereby retains its natural delicacy and flavor. Mm -mm. All right. That's my weird junk giveaway. To be entered, you can leave me a comment. I will remind you again at the end of the video in case you want to wait. Uh, we're going to talk about long dog samplers. Which pattern is your favorite? Just your favorite. You don't have to say that you're going to stitch it. You don't have to like, whatever. Which one is your favorite? I love the new one, Templar's Prophecy. I think it's, I think it's so wonderful. And the reason I love Long Dog Samplers is the same reason I love California Asparagus Tin Play Food. Weird and quirky. Her animals are sometimes so funny to me but if you look in Templar's Prophecy there's that big dark circle which I think is the intimidating part of that pattern but if you look to the right it's easy to miss but there's this long necked weird face coming out of the circle just like it it's so funny I love it I'm very tempted by that one anyway Leave me a comment, which one is your favorite? Maybe why, if you want to enlighten me. If not, no big deal. I'm going to give away two packages. So, there you go. Let's talk about what I've been working on lately. It's all piled on the bed, so I'm gonna go out of frame when I reach for it, but I know you don't care. You're probably not even watching this, are you? You're just stitching. I'm tempted to sing you a song, but I won't. Been hammering away at Teresa Kogut's best ghoul friends. <sighs> the reason why I sigh is I feel like there's two types of stitchers. There's those of us who love huge blocks of color, and there are those of us who want to poke our eyeballs out when we have to do huge blocks of color, and I'm definitely of the second sort. So I'm using random color and cotton flosses that I got in the monthly floss club years ago, and I'm just filling and filling and filling and filling and trying not to poke my eyeballs out. It's gonna be so cute. It's gonna be so cute when it's done. I'm not doing these border strips on the side because by that point I won't be able to take it anymore. And it will fit in an eight by 10 frame if I don't. So I'm just doing the girls chilling together. Also put on some time, put in some time with Woodland Santa. We hung out for a while. We have a very on again, off again relationship and I have been tempted to just give him away at certain points. I don't really know why. I think it's my fabric choice. I wish I would have picked something else. I don't really want to restart him, so I'm just kind of like... Bleh. I still have him on my my lap stand. I get questions about my lap stand. This is a PVC pipe. It's with my shirts. I get questions about my lap stand. 
This is a PVC pipe lap stand that you can build yourself for about $8. If you search for it here on YouTube, you will easily find some tutorials that show you how to build yourself a lap stand. I do not have a case creation. I do not have, what's the other one called? The one you get from England? Lowry stand. I don't have a Lowry stand. All I have is the $8 PVC pipe lap stand. I've been using it for four years. Um, the only downside to it, in my opinion, is it's starting to fall apart every time you pick it up. And that's because it's been taken apart and put back together so many times that I think the water pipes are stretched out. So I'm thinking I might glue it together so it stops falling apart. Real smart, right? And then make a second one that I can travel with. Because one of the nice things about this is you can take it apart, throw it in your suitcase. It's not taking up a huge amount of space. What up, Santa? So here's what Santa looks like. And he's cute. He's fine. I should keep going. Uh, he has all his back stitching in, like, through here. And then I back stitched that part with the little chipmunk. What else is there to say? There's nothing else to say. My most complicated project and long-winded project, my oldest whip is my Chatelaine. It is called Mushroom and Fern Man Mandala. It will look like this when it's done. I don't mind this being my oldest whip. Um, it's like two and a half years old, I think, because I really don't think I'm going to stitch another large Chatelaine. I'm really not tempted by any of the other ones. I just like this one. Um, some of the smaller patterns, I'm kind of like, yeah, maybe someday, but this is a unique pro project. It feels different than other projects. Um, I, I've talked about that before, and so I kind of don't mind stretching it out, knowing that I'm not going to do another one, most likely, and um, it feels different. I don't know, it's a different change of, it's, it's a change of pace. It's just more complex, and I, I do enjoy it. And here's where we're at. I finished another tree. The trees, you know, I've made six of them. I have two more to go and they're big trees. It looks really nice, doesn't it? It looks really nice. Um, I just, I really, what I love about this and even just looking at it is it has so many different dimensions. Um, the different textures of the threads, uh, the different levels of poofiness. How would I professionally say that? I don't know. Like those, look at those poofy stitches under those mushrooms and then the black work and then the eyelets. There, it's just visually very, very interesting. And it's fun, it's fun to create. I don't know. I just like it. I'm in this weird spot with the things that I'm working on where I kind of do want to finish everything, but I also want to start everything. And I know you can't do both at the same time, so I'm trying to go along finishing everything and resist the urge to start everything. It's hard. Hey. 
I did start one thing though. Uh, I, I made a birthday start. I like making a birthday start because it helps you to remember when you started something. I'm not a journaler. I don't write these things down. I know a lot of people like tracking things. I, so far, I have not. Thank you, Chris, for my wonky chicken bag. This is housing a farm project that I started. So right before my birthday, I was really hardcore, like, you're, you're going to finish all these things. You're just going to finish them. You're not going to start anything. But then my birthday came and, you know, you like to be indulgent. So I looked through all my patterns. Of course nothing appealed to me that I had already bought. And then the thought came to me. I've been following the Common Stitcher thread. Is that what it's called? I forget. But everyone was talking about their favorite designers, and so, you know, you kind of answer the questions in your own mind, and one of my favorite designers is definitely Barbara Anna, and I thought, you know, Steph, can you say that when you've never stitched anything by Barbara Anna? That doesn't seem... Yeah, one of my favorites is Barbara Anna, but I've never stitched any. This pattern has always appealed to me. One day I will do All Creatures Great and Small. Pause for a garbage truck. However, the pattern that I've been tempted to purchase, uh, purchase a few times before, I've never seen anyone stitch it. And I don't even really know what appeals to me specifically about it because I think she has so many great designs that I would love to have, but this is the one I've been tempted by. It's called Skinny Wolf Farm, and that is a very blurry picture, but that is what it looks like. This one came out in 2017. Is that right? Yes. It came out in 2017, and I've loved it since then. I... Again, it's the quirky funkiness of it. All the animals are, like, a little bit off. Uh, so the dog has no ears nor tail. The sheep don't really look too much like sheep. The cat's like, Meh. I... I just love how quirky it is. Um, the guy has like big poofy pirate sleeves. This is wonderful. It was nine dollars. So this was my nine dollar birthday splurge. And since I, you know, had to wait to the last minute to make a decision, like I usually do, I just do it with something in my stash. This is a 32 count by weeks. It's labeled 32 count. It does not measure 32 count. I think it's more like a 30 or a 28. But isn't it wonderful? It's the color Dove. I've charted with this color before. I just really like it. It's It acts like a neutral even though it's really a green. Isn't it beautiful? Look at the cat. See what I mean? Huh? Look at the dog. It's so weird. <laughs> I love it. And I love how the colors are coming out. So I, it's charted in all DMC. I picked out a splattering of classic color works. And a few DMC. And... This it's gonna it's gonna look amazing. I love look how that coral looks on the green. I am all into this color lately, these colors with like neutrally dingy colors mixed in. You know what I'm saying? Like oh, of course this is just fall. This is just me longing for fall. Oh, it's so wonderful. I love it. Um, these DMCs don't match the picture, so I'm not sure what happened there, but you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Um, the one color that is a wool I decided to use, Gentle Arts Fisherman's Wharf. This was a new color this year, 
So the wool, I love stitching with. I feel like sometimes with silk, I can't visually tell looking at the stitches if they're silk or if they're DMC. Maybe I just have an untrained, ignorant eye. It's possible. With wool, I feel like I can tell. Um, so I did the cat in wool, and of course you're not going to be able to tell on camera, but it's just fuzzier. And I like that you stitch with one strand, and it just has, it has texture and poofiness. It's just really lovely. It makes me want to do like a sampler in wool. But this color is really cool. It's like a 413, but it has like splotches of brown in it. Skinny Wool Farm. This is going to work up so quickly. It's so wonderful. I love it. Okay. That is all I worked on since the last time I saw you. I have been doing some stitching for some commissions that I've gathered, but I cannot show you that at this time. Let me see stuff that has come to my house. Nah, let's do the poem. Let's do the poem because it totally has to do with stuff that has come to my house. Here is today's poem. I think you're gonna love it. I read it to my children after dinner one night and they liked it too. It's it's wonderful. It is from Good Poems, American Places by Garrison Keeler. I am slowly reading through this one and it's pretty good. That's pretty good. I'm not totally sure about why they're all, like, what the unifying theme is. I don't know. Were they all written in America? Some of them have, like, a sense of place in America, but some of them I'm just like, I don't know. Go with the flow. Just read it, Steph. What's your problem? Okay. This one is called, I have a crush on you, UPS man. Now, for those of you who don't live in the United States and you don't know what the UPS is, it's a parcel service that is not the government-run mail service. It's a private company. Now, the thing about UPS men is they're not all, they surely can't be all men, but I've never seen a woman work for UPS. I don't know what that's about. Anyway, they wear brown uniforms, they drive brown trucks with no door, they just hop right out of the van because there's no door, and they almost all year wear shorts. I also don't know what that's about. Maybe so they can feel the breeze coming through the truck on their legs, I don't know, <laughs> anyway. <laughs> anyway, they deliver packages, right? Okay. I have a crush on you, UPS man, by Alice Persons. You bring me all the things I order, are never in a bad mood, always have a jaunty wave as you drive away, look good in your brown shorts. We have an ideal, uncomplicated relationship. You're like a cute boyfriend with great legs who always brings the perfect present. Why, it's just what I always wanted and then is considerate enough to go away. Oh, UPS man, let's hop in your clean brown truck and elope. Ditch your job and I'll ditch mine. Let's hit the road for Brownsville and tempt each other with all the luscious brown foods. Roast beef, dark chocolate, brownies, Guinness, homemade pumpernickel, molasses cookies. I'll make you my mama's bourbon pecan pie. We'll give all the packages to kind-looking strangers, live in a cozy wood cabin with a brown dog or two and a black and brown tabby. I'm serious, UPS man. Let's do it. Where do I sign? You're welcome. Here is what the UPS man has brought me.
I never thought I would own that book. I mean, never thought, I never thought I would own that book. And yet someone just sent it to me. And um, so, Maurice, thank you from the bottom of my long dog love and heart. I don't deserve things like that. I don't deserve things like that. And, um, I don't know. I don't know what to say. Um, I, <laughs> I don't know what to say. Uh, my copy of the cover pattern is going back to the person who originally sold it to me. I have gotten several inquiries about um, selling it. And because I finished it, I forgot to show you that. I'm, okay. Sorry, I'm so disorganized. Here is, without further ado, my finish of Noah's Tree, La Brie de No by Julia Line of Lawn Dog Samplers. I loved every stitch of this. This is hand-dyed fabrics by Stephanie in the color Abyss, 32 count linen. It is not hard to stitch on, though it is a dark color. Um, Ecru DMC, it, it was lovely. I loved stitching this. Uh, it, you know, I said I get bored doing filling. I don't think that stitching monochromatically is is boring. I I think it's relaxing, and I needed this. Um, you know how I, I, one of the reasons I like cross stitch is for some reason you can remember, at least I can remember, or I associate certain pieces with memories of when and where I was stitching it, and this one. Like, I can look at this, and I know I was, like, right around here at a coffee shop, like, literally beside myself um, with grief. So it has some bittersweet, it has some bittersweet memories attached to it, but I needed it. It was therapy for me, and I, I love this. I love this so much. What drew me to this pattern was the bunnies. I did not even realize this was a Noah's Ark pattern until I got it in the mail and really looked at it. And I was like, what does that say at the bottom? The animals went in too, but oh. The bunnies right here. I was like, there's bunnies sailing a ship. I need that. And I love the dog at the top on the mast. So cute. It's so cute. The cat sliding down the rigging. Oh, I love it. The only problem I had, and um, Andrea from, is her, I'll put her YouTube name on the screen. I think it's Cautionary Tale. Um, I highly recommend her videos. She's hilarious. But she's working on Death by Cross Stitch, and she ran into the problem of the alphabet not fitting in the designated spot. And that happened with me too. Um, there's a J and an L here for Julia Line. And my W, like I have some of the widest initials. S is usually a lot wider than this because you have to do the whole curves. So the S fit, that was good. The, uh, the W um, runs into, it's just too crowded, I don't know. It looks uneven and a little bit strange, but I don't know what else to do. Ws are hard to make in a small space. So it is what it is, but this, this is lovely. And it's now in my closet in my finishes, but I think this one is definitely prob definitely probably it's definitely probably going to get a frame before some other ones do because I I really love it. It just looks so classic and elegant and it's going to look amazing on my wall. So, um... Ugh.
really thankful for the opportunity to stitch that. I, I cannot believe that this is in my possession. Um, I had my eye on a specific other pattern. Of course I had an, my eye on the out of print pattern book. But what I've really been hankering for is Cranston. Where is it? This one. This one might be my next stitch. I just love, I love how that looks. And I love the bands on the bottom with the back stitching. And it's just really, really lovely. Do you want a flip through of this? I thought about doing a flip through of this, but I just didn't know if it would just be like, oh, look at all the patterns that you have no access to and no way to buy. Haha. Ha. I don't want it to be like that, but if you're genuinely interested in seeing all of the patterns that are in this book, there's 10 of them, let me know down below. And don't forget to leave me a comment of what your favorite long dog sampler piece is. Okay. So that was a segue back to the other things that the UPS man brought me. So in my last video, I showed you this model that was kindly gifted, um, Night Music. I think it's so cute and wanted to know who designed it. And one of you, so many of you were kind enough to look through your stash and figure it out for me. And then one of you was kind enough to send me an extra copy of the magazine that you had. This is Just Crossed It. Thank you. This is just cross stitch Halloween 2016. And the designer was Cheryl Granada of Glendon Place. Isn't that adorable? That is that murky? That's murky. That's murky. I'm getting to where I can recognize <laughs> recognize picture of this plus colors. Isn't that adorable? That's adorable. I think that's worth the price of the magazine. So thanks for the info and for the, the pattern. This is the pattern that I've had on my list for a while. It is by Carriage House Samplings and I found it for a couple bucks on eBay. It's called His Heart Belongs to Me and I just think it's simple and adorable. There is a boy in the heart of York and his heart belongs to me. I just like his little trousers. Okay, speaking of unicorns, I feel so spoiled and I didn't ask for any of this. And it just I people are just so kind and generous. So this was one of my unicorn unicorn charts. A unicorn chart being not a chart that actually has a unicorn, although my long dog sampler pattern has a unicorn. Unicorn chart meaning you hardly ever come across it, and if you do, it's like uh, the price of your kidney to purchase it, and so it's as rare as a unicorn. This was this was a pattern I've been looking at on eBay for quite some time. Um, it's usually sold as a kit. It's a Dimensions Gold Collection and it rarely sells for anything less than about $80. And while I totally understand that a Dimensions Gold Kit is going to provide you with more than 80 hours of relaxation and entertainment. I s hey, it's me from the future. So I was just making sure my video went okay. And there's just like this huge section that isn't there. It's like it never even happened. So now I have to like fill in the narrative what in the world I was talking about. So this is future stuff acting like she's not frustrated because I'm not, I'm totally not frustrated. So what I was talking about was Dimensions Gold Collection didn't want to spend $80 on a cross stitch kit and you really can't find it outside of those bounds. And 
Jen Upton found it in a Facebook marketplace cross-stitch haul. And I don't think those words have ever been used together before, have they? You can say them. Facebook marketplace cross-stitch haul. And I just commented saying, that's a really rare kit and it's pretty expensive. I've looked for it myself. Can't believe you found it. She just sent it to me like some sort of crazy generous person. Roadster Santa by Dimensions Gold Collection, which I've already said three times. I'm not frustrated. I'm not. Okay, so this is Santa driving his Roadster car. I don't know anything about cars or how to talk about them. Roadster car. Is Roadster a, an adjective? Roadster, is Roadster an adjective or a noun? Does he ride, drive the Roadster? Santa's driving his Roadster car mobile. And he's just beep beep coming through, driving like a crazy person with a gigantic Christmas tree. And the snowmen are shocked and horrified. They're like, Santa! You don't obey traffic laws? What's wrong with you? I love it. I also showed you how I bought some white Ada. <laughs> I know you didn't want to miss that. Cat let himself in. <clears throat> he wants to show it to you too. We bought some white Ada. I'll take it out of the bag so there's not a glare. This is rapidly taking a turn for the worse. Okay, so the only remaining hole that needs filled in is that I went to Hobby Lobby on my birthday. My husband was very indulgent and I will tell you about that by means of past stuff. Her hair didn't look this good, though. Sorry, camera died. So anyway, anywhere that is like stereotypically a female's range, he is a horrible shopper. He hates being in there and he hovers over me. And I don't think he will mind me sharing that, but he just basically like... And I know the whole time he's thinking, are you done yet? Are you done yet? Are you done yet? So he did the most loving and wonderful thing for me on my birthday. He dropped me off at Hobby Lobby and said, text me when you're done. <laughs> so I went into Hobby Lobby and spent as much time as I wanted. And I You know, I picked up a rose gold turkey. Look at this! Isn't this wonderful? They had an even bigger one. Um, and they had silver gold and rose gold. And I just had to get this. It was like seven bucks. Like, I know it's just a big lump of plastic that they spray painted, but it's so wonderful! Also, I don't know if if a lot of you will know who Tim Holtz is, but I am really getting into his stuff. He has a section in the scrapbook part of Hobby Lobby, and excuse me while I open a wrinkly package, but um, it has paper goods in it. It has like, I think Teresa Kitten Stitcher just picked up like some tins, but he has a lot of like vintage ephemera kind of stuff. It's not all paper. Some of it is like metal. Some of it is like thick cardstock. But it's it's really creative vintage looking things. Like they had a package of nothing but like 30 little photo booth strips with old pictures on them of random people. And I was so tempted by it. But like a lot of the stuff, like, I'm like, I want that. 
but I don't really know what I would do with it. Uh, I did pick this one up. It is called an ephemera pack and it's called Thrift Shop. You can't even see what's in it. But it has, it's just papers, but they're all like vintage looking images that are just so interesting. Like here's a playing card. What got to me is look, like little buttons. There's, this is fascinating to me. Like here's a JP Coates best six cord spool cotton but it's a little calendar. I don't think it, it doesn't say what year, but uh, so many just interesting reproduction sort of things. And I'm, I'm thinking Mod Podge with some, I don't know. It's just, <laughs> it's a lot of random stuff that's so cool, but yeah, I haven't really figured out what to do with it. I'm not a scrapbooker. I used to be, it just, never really fulfilled a great need in my life. I want to figure something out. So if you haven't visited that section, I think that you should. The last thing that I picked up is some random stuff from the wood section. Uh, yeah, Hobby Lobby has some interesting things. So I think I'm going to design something for Nashville with this. I have looked at this piece many, many times. I think it's interesting. I love that it has little feet on it. I don't know why, but that floats my boat. It has this little drawer, which I put some rusty scissors in. And then it has the mirror with the ribbon. They can replace that ribbon and then design something for somewhere. Don't steal that idea. I also picked up this one, but I don't know how how good it will be for cross stitch because it has the beveled edge on the top. So I'm not sure how you would get that straight. Maybe you could sand it down. But I like the shape of that one. And then lastly, they have little jar. Like I just love little containers. But again, I'm really not sure what you do with them. I love this. It has the rose gold top and it's a jar, but I'm thinking you could definitely put something on the top of that jar, right? It's two bucks. It's two bucks for a jar that I can put in my drawer and have no idea what to do with. And if that ain't a deal, I don't know what is. That is all I had to share with you today. Make sure you sign up well, number one for my giveaway, favorite long dog sampler pattern, put it down below. Make sure you sign up for my newsletter as well. I am releasing a great freebie pretty soon that you're going to want to know about, so sign up for that. I don't release a newsletter even every month. I'm inconsistent, but not annoying, so sign up without fear. Thanks for hanging out with me. You can check me out at lindystitches.com or hang out with me on Instagram under the name, guess what, Lindy Stitches. I will talk to you guys later. Just totally ran out of steam on that outro. Be well, do good work, keep in touch, bye.